Another method for evaluating an investment project is what's known as accounting rate of return. And what accounting rate of return does is it looks at average net income over the average book value, or if we assume that the cost of the project is, is uh, in this case, I'll, I have some numbers here, 500000 it's depreciated over a five-year period to zero. We figure out what the average book value is. We figure out what the average net income is, and we can figure out what the accounting rate of return is. Okay, average book value is simply going to be the book value 500,000 at the beginning of the period, okay, plus its value at the end of the period, divided by two. So this is just going to be $250,000. Average net income, all we have to do is add up these numbers, divide by five, so let's do that. Let's see what we have here, average We have 100,000 in the first year plus 150,000 in the second year plus 50,000 in the third year. In the fourth year, we have no net income, and in the final year, we actually lost money. And we're going to divide that by five. So we could come over here and just add these up really quickly. change that sign to negative so we get 250,000 divided by 5 so we get an average net income of 50,000 and so our accounting rate of return and I'll abbreviate it with AAR average accounting return is going to be equal to 50,000 divided by 250,000. So we'll take that 50,000, we'll divide it by 250, and we get point, point two zero or 20%. Now, one of the nice things about accounting rate of return is that it's relatively easy to calculate. The information you need should be readily available. I mean, corporations have to report their accounting information, so it should be fairly easy to get this, this information. They'll use pro forma financial statements to forecast the cash flows and the net income from under, undertaking a project, so that, that works out pretty well. Um, but the problem with using this is that it's not really a rate of return number one, we've not accounted for the time value of money. Uh, does it account for all cash flows? Well, net income doesn't really account for all cash flows. It only accounts for revenues, things that we see. It doesn't count, account for things like cannibalization, okay, synergy effects, etc. It doesn't adjust for risk. Okay, we see no way that we've adjusted for risk. These numbers come from wherever they come from. Uh, you could rank projects from it, so that's a positive. And it has no bearing on how much value it adds to the firm. So again, it can be a useful secondary tool for evaluation, but as a primary tool, it actually violates a lot of the um, criteria we set up for determining what's a good tool for evaluating a project. But overall, it's relatively easy to calculate, and so that is one of the pluses of using it.